Today, I want to talk to you about risk management in trading. How do professional traders approach risk management? You know, is it different from amateur traders? Big hint. Yes, it is very different. We constantly hear about how much money you can make in trading and how many shiny objects you can buy. The reality is none of that matters if you can't control your risk and your downside. So with that in mind, we're going to take a deep dive into some clear strategies you can use that are used by some of the best traders in the world on large trading floors. You'll be able to apply these techniques to your trading straight away, which is going to help you preserve the capital you need to make a success in the business of professional trading. So we're going to get you out of that amateur way of thinking and get you into a professional mindset, which is going to completely transform your bottom line in trading. Now, before we begin, it's really, really important we emphasize A, not only how important risk management is as a key pillar that will contribute to your success in trading, but also B, actually put in place a clear risk management strategy that ensures you're not lost whilst you're in the intensity of the trade. So with regards to A, the importance of risk management, it's probably one of the biggest reasons most amateur traders fail because their sole focus tends to be on the upside. Now, that would make sense because it's the winning trades that make you money, right? Wrong. And if that is what you think you've had it in this business, you can now see why over 99% of traders that enter this business fail because that is how they think. Now, to really hammer home the point of why this is totally fatal to your trading, let's jump on the whiteboard and actually look at an example which will help bring everything to life. Okay, so as promised, you can see we've got the whiteboard here. It's really gonna hammer home the point I was making about risk management by way of an example. It's the best way to really highlight this. Not only will it enable me to highlight it to you, but it will enable you to see it for yourself, just how important this is. By looking at two very simple scenarios that you will actually be able to relate to in your own trading. Right, so we'll look at scenario one and we'll look at scenario two. At the bottom here, we can just say these are the sort of daily uh, P and L, the days uh, P and L. So the profits you're making on a daily basis and then this is gonna be a graph. Forgive my handwriting, but it will make sense as I draw it out. Okay, so you've got a graph here of time against profits time against profits, okay. And we'll actually look at this at, at a real trade as well so you get to see it, but let's just look at it here first because it's gonna make a lot of sense to you in this format because a lot of you will be used to seeing your PL, you know, equity curve in graphical format, okay. So let's say on day one, you make some profits, right? Very straightforward, graph goes up, okay. Everyone's happy, both scenarios, you make profit on day one. Day two, you make some really nice profits, okay? Day two, you make some really nice profits. Okay, pretty straightforward so far. So obviously your equity curve, you know, whether it's your personal account, a funded account, or whatever it is, it's gonna be showing this, basically goes up. Day three, we're on a bit of a roll, okay? We've all been there, but we have some decent trading performance and you know just a little bit more and then day four of course can't always be winning maybe a slight loss which just kind of wipes out the previous day's gain still still a healthy curve and then maybe on the final day of the week another uh, positive trade okay so let's say we made some new equity highs actually Okay, so very, very positive, you know, good start, basically. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay, oh, this could be your new account that you've opened, or like I said, maybe a new funded challenge you've taken. Things are off to a great start. Now, unfortunately, the following week, what happens? You come in on the Monday, now, in scenario A, you have a normal size loss, 
right? So you simply have a normal size loss, and then on the next day, Tuesday, you have a normal size loss again. Okay, so things aren't looking too bad, but you know, not a great start to the week. In scenario two, you have a huge loss. Okay, on the Monday and then on the Tuesday, to make matters worse, you have another huge loss. All of a sudden, you're negative. Monday, Tuesday, and this is Monday, Tuesday. Okay, and then Wednesday, Wednesday again, things are back to normal. You know, you've had a, you have a couple of winnings streak here i'm going to explain this in a minute here you have on this scenario small two small winning days okay so maybe overall you're on a slight loss or break even here look how healthy your curve is okay so let's actually break down what's happened here so first things first to realize is can you see that in both scenarios how many winning days have you had one, two, three, four, five, six winning days. Are we agreed? Six winning days and losing days? One, two, three. Three losing days. In this scenario, how many winning days have you had? The same. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six winning days and how many losing days? Three. One, two, three. Three losing days. So can you see the actual composition of the week in terms of Winning days, winning trades, wi uh, losing days, potentially losing trades. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same ratio. Right? Very, very healthy. So what's happened? Where's the difference? It's here, isn't it? So we can actually highlight it if we just change color. So just to reiterate, this is your equity curve. And here, that's your equity curve complete, I wouldn't say desired, but pretty much is, you know, not a great result. It's that, isn't it? That is basically the difference. So in scenario one, you've ended up up here, right? Uh, and obviously in scenario two, you've ended up down here. Look at the difference. That is the difference. That is the difference. That not protecting your downside on any given trade can make. And do you see why I say most people are always thinking about the upside and winning trades and they always think that it's the winning trades that contribute to a winning equity curve. But do you see that? Couldn't be further from the truth. Of course it's important to have winning trades, but as I'm going to show you, and as I've already shown you, not protecting your downside can literally be the difference between having, you know, a fantastic equity curve that can be life-changing to a complete disaster. Do you see? Same number of wins, losses, everything's identical, not protecting your downside. And actually, this is where you really take yourself from an amateur into a professional level, is one thing I bet no one's noticed is these two winning days are bigger than these. Why? Because do you see mentally also, what people don't realize, it's not only about protecting the downside, it's about protecting your whole mental state when it comes to trading, following losing days. So think about here, you've protected your downside, you've ended up here. You're still feeling pretty good, you've got some equity, you know, profits that you can risk, Think how much more comfortable you're going to feel when you come into Wednesday, Thursday and your setups are there. You're going to be pretty relaxed because you're still very positive. You don't mind taking risk. And you're really going to hammer those setups home. What happens here? You're feeling down in the dumps. We've all been there. You're thinking, oh my God, how did I allow that to happen to myself? The setups appear the next two days. Do you see they're not even on this day? And what happens? You get overly cautious. This is in your mind. Do you see it has a knock-on effect even on the following winning days, okay? And so it's not only this, it's also these days that it's impacting, okay? So incredibly important to 
protect your downside. I do not see enough people talking about this. This is really what is going to make a difference between you having an equity curve like that and that. So hopefully you can all see in a real world format, in a format that you're all used to seeing in your own PL, just how effective and like, I mean, literally life-changing it is if you start to focus on actually preventing things like this happening, which is what we're going to do now. Now, funnily enough, the easiest way to do this, again, is by just drawing out a little example and just literally showing you two scenarios, okay? And here I'm going to show you what I have seen really from amateur traders that I see um, applying risk management and I'm going to show you what professional traders tend to do okay very very different okay um, we'll look at an example and I will show you a real trade as well in just a moment where I've actually applied this however very important we look at it in picture format first so we can actually break it down side by side okay So that scenario A, and you'll see why I've drawn it out like that in a second. You know, this is your chart. Doesn't matter what it is, Forex, equities, crypto, it doesn't matter. Okay, just trying to make it exactly the same. Okay, so again, scenario A, amateur, and scenario B, professional. Okay. Now let's say in this trade, or in this scenario, you enter on the break here. Right, so you've entered on the break, and that's your entry, okay? And then similarly here, professional trader, you know, let's assume the entries are identical, you know, no, don't want to make any variance there. We don't want to complicate things. You've both entered in the same place, um, either yourself, you know, you're an amateur trader, um, or you're a professional working on a trading floor in a bank, you've entered here, okay? So same entry. Now, both believe it or not, have the same area. You know, you're both going to have an area where you say to yourself, okay, I want to be out of the trade for whatever reason that is. Okay, so let's say that's where you have your exit. Your exit, okay. Now, one thing that is important, we must recognize, all right, is straight away, if you want to move away from gambling territory, you do need to have an exit point, okay? And um, a lot of amateur traders will have that. So, you know, that's a good start. If you have that, that's a good start. And then, you know, we hear this golden number, 2% risk, 2% risk. Now, it doesn't really matter. People get way over-focused on this, 2%, 2.5%. One and a half, whatever you feel comfortable. Obviously, don't risk 50%, but, you know, something reasonable. Fine, say 2%. There's no golden number. People talk about, you know, you should only risk 1% on a trade or this. Or, it doesn't matter. Okay, do what you feel comfortable with according to your own sort of risk appetite. As long as it's nothing crazy. Be sensible, you know, 1%, 2 3%, whatever. Anything above that probably is quite a lot, but let's just go with 2% just for the sake of argument on both sides, okay? So no difference. So for example here, if you've got a 10K account, that's going to be $200, right? And let's just say for argument's sake, even the professional trader, same amount, just so we can compare easily. Okay, so entries here, would you agree that risk there, you position size it accordingly so it's $200, Okay, and then potentially, I don't know, you might be in, aiming for a target down here. Right, that is, don't know, say $500. Okay, so you agreed the risk reward is 2.5 to 1. Okay, fairly healthy. So by having an area where you know you want to exit, that's applying good risk management, you know, you're going to prevent yourself having these crazy days, as we saw in the previous example, where you get completely wiped out, right? So firstly, have an area in mind that you know, right, that is where I'm wrong, I'm out, and be disciplined about it. That's A. 
That's going to move you from gambler into amateur territory. That's not good enough, though. Okay, this is where, think about it. 99% of traders fail. They're all doing that. They're all going for three to one, two to one. They all have stop losses. And how many videos do you watch where they all say, yeah, you know, have a stop and, you know, set it here and two to one and all of that stuff. Yet they're still failing. Okay, so clearly that's not good enough. You need to take it to the next level. And that's really what I want to show you is that professional traders are not doing this. Okay, this is not what they are doing. Okay, what they will typically do, okay, is they will recognize the probability, right? So the probability of this trade working out might be 50%. Right, they recognize this. It's 50%, you know. Um, maybe the trade might improve odds as time goes on. Do I really want to risk my entire 2%? No, let me only risk half. Okay, so they might risk a hundred dollars here. You see, so they only risk half of that. Whereas what I see amateur traders doing, they'll risk the whole amount. Now you see what's happened here. The market's come back. Okay, and we've almost had one, two, three attempts at buyers trying to break kind of potentially where sellers stops are, and it's failed. Then the market breaks again. And that is where, potentially, this professional trader is adding his next 50%. I cannot explain to you the importance of this. The probability, so I should say his $100 here. So 50% of the position, okay? So it's not 50% probability, but he's adding 50% of his position on there, okay? So 50% here, 50% here. Here, this guy's put on 100%, okay? This is 50% and 50%. Now, the key thing here is the probability of this trade has potentially jumped significantly. So from this point here to this point, probability is now 90%. Okay, two crucial things about that, why that is important, because there is a window here between this point and this point. So that same window here, which amateur traders completely ignore, I see it time and time again, there is a window. Can you see the problem about this window? Okay, this if the market stops you out here, here, here as a professional trader, what are you going to be losing in this window? What's your loss? A hundred dollars. What's your loss in this window here as an amateur trader is two hundred dollars okay so as a professional trader your window if it breaks you lose minus one hundred dollars in this window you lose minus two hundred double you are losing that's not all that's just the downside the downside what about the upside well think about what's happened here your risk of this trade working out in this scenario is fifty percent the risk of this trade, uh, the probability, sorry, of this trade working is 50%. The probability of this trade working is not 50%, okay? You've put on half your position at 50%. The other half you put on at 90%, right? So your risk has just shot up to 90 plus 50, 140 divided by 2, 70%, okay? You see you've increased the probability of this trade working from 50 to 70. So not only have you limited your downside, but you've also increased your upside. Why? Because if, if you're taking trades that have probability of working out at 70% versus 50%, do you agree your win, your number of winners are going to be significantly higher? The number of winners as a professional trader, because you're taking higher probability trades. Okay, just... And I know this might be a lot for you to take in right now, but simply do not see this ever spoken about by any retail traders. That is why 99% of them fail. Okay, we all have heard it a million times from every trader. Oh yeah, you know, have good risk reward, two to one. Yeah, 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 they still lose. Why? This is why, okay? Because they're not taking into account probability, they're not thinking about this whole trade window 
you know, compared to more of a linear approach, this linear approach. Okay, and just finally, and I'm going to leave it there, I promise, and I'll quickly show you one uh, real example as well of a trade that I took where this matters. Let's think of why this is so crucial. Because let's say you have a scenario where you take three or four trades, okay, and the first three are losers. Okay, so do you agree in this scenario, what have you done? Minus 200, minus 200, minus 200. Then you get a winner at 500, okay, so 500. What's your overall P&L, right? So minus 600 plus, it's minus 100. In this scenario, let's say the same thing happens, three losses and then one winner, what's your P&L? Minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, and then plus 500. So you're actually up. Okay, can you see the equity curve even in this, oh, I only take three to one risk trades and, you know, I don't mean to mock anyone, but it's true. You're still going to be just really flat. You're not really going to go anywhere. Okay, whereas a professional trader, do you see, they're going to go up and they're going to limit their downside. They're going to go up, they're going to limit their downside. They're going to go up, they're going to limit their downside. And that is why they have such positive equity curves. And it's important I say this because it's true. It's actually worse than that. Because what happens after three losses, you know, when you're trading like this, you're down in the dumps, you've taken three full losses. As I said before, you're not really going to go in with full conviction on that final trade. So probably you might even exit early here, right? And just, oh, relief, I made some money back. And you might only end up with plus 300. Right, so you could actually be down 300, you know, plus six, uh, minus 600 plus 300 is minus 300. That's more likely what's going to happen. In this scenario, what's going to happen is, as a professional trader, you realize, wow, in this circumstance, you know, the market's got me to a stage where my probability has jumped to 90%. Let me actually get more aggressive. You know, instead of just putting on 100% risk, let me go with 150, you know, let me risk 300 instead of 200, right, so 1.5 times my normal risk, so instead of making 500, you're actually going to make 1.5 times that, which is 750, okay, so you may actually be plus 750, and these are minus 100, etc, etc, so minus 300 plus 750 is actually plus 450, compared to minus 300. Same trades, same trades, okay? Cannot stress this enough, okay? This is the importance of looking at um, not only protecting your downside, okay? And I, I accept that's a great start of taking you from a gambler into a, you know, at least the starting level, you know, without actually having a clear exit in mind, you're just gambling. But it's not good enough. Can you see it's not good enough? You're not going to really get that equity curve yeah, you might have a decent start and then it's just going to fall down. It's just going to go flat sideways. Can you see why? Can you see why? Because you're not taking into account different areas within this window where probability of your trade is changing. A professional trader is doing that. You don't need to get overly complicated and start calculating probabilities. All I'm saying is as part of your risk management strategy, start thinking about, you know, do things very simply. So just finally... Still risk the 200, the 200 here, 200 here. But think about splitting it out and be very strategic about where you implement that 200. So I'm not saying do anything drastically differently. You know, still risk your 2%, apply common sense. Don't risk more than 200 in the trade. And I've never said that, you know, the professional trader is doing anything differently. All I'm saying is be clever about how you distribute the 200, because probability is going to be changing, okay? And that is why, final point, when people tell you set and forget, and I'm sorry, but that is just lazy with a capital L-A-Z-Y, okay? Set and forget is going to get you nowhere, okay? You need to be active in this window, okay? Fine, once you get here and you've put all your position on, you can 
you know, if you want to step away, leave it to play out, that's fine. But not in this window. Okay, in this window, that is just pure lazy behavior. You need to be active. You need to be thinking about how the probability of your trade might be changing. It can be a fairly small window. Typically, I'll be watching it for 10, 15 minutes. I'm not saying watching it continuously, but in that small window, right, you want to be active. It's like going to work. I've said this before. You know, if you turned up at work at nine o'clock in the morning and you put a trade on and then you left, you're going to get fired, okay? You're not going to get anywhere in life or in your job doing that. At least for the early part of the window, right, you need to be working. Do you agree? Okay, thinking. So don't put your full risk on, distribute it, all right? And be clear where you want to exit. Let's have a very quick look at one example and then we'll be done. Okay, so this is an actual trade that I took. It's a fascinating example because I'm going to show you the risk management strategy I talked about actually brought to life in a real life example where I'll show you how it actually made a difference compared to potentially what an amateur might do versus a, a professional. And I'll actually show you in real dollar terms what a huge difference this can make. So you can, I don't want you to think I'm just talking at you, giving you some risk management rules that I'm not actually applying myself. Okay, so we can see a trade I took here. You know, I went long there and then here I went short, okay? But the position sizing was different. You know, the probability of this trade was, you know, let's just say 50%. The probability of this trade was more like 80, 90%. Why? Because more, more time had passed and that window that I talked about, I had many more clues, you know? So we had, almost like I talked about in that example, you know, we've had one, two, three sort of failures for the buyers to really do much that significantly increased the probability on the downside that this trade would work out. Whereas early in the morning I was looking to buy, but there were very little clues. So in the morning it made sense to go in with much smaller size. And then later in the day when I had an increase in probability, go in with more size, okay? And let me really show you what a difference that makes. So, and this is in terms of the equity curve um, for I think the last 30 trading days. So you can see here, upside, protect the downside. Upside, protect the downside. You know, so a bit of a sideways period here, but always capping it, capping it, right? Capping it. So, and what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to show you these two trades that we just looked at here. And that was really um, the point I wanted to make. Okay, so let's have a look at my list of trades and these two trades on this day. Okay, so today, can you see virtually identical trades, same amount of risk in terms of distance as I showed you in the previous example. In fact, let me just change the color so it's a bit clearer. Okay, so entry here, exit there. So you see that is the amount of risk in terms of distance, right? Same here entry here and actually my stop was just above here so do you see this and this the risk in terms of distance is the exact same but the amount of risk i'm putting on the trade is substantially more here because the probability is higher and do you see when i lost i lost minus 375 when i gained you know the trade didn't particularly go very far but I ended up gaining almost five times as much. One, five, three, seven. Why? Volume. Double the size. Do you see my initial trade where I lost? Do you remember I talked about that window where I said in that window, professional traders might only be risking 100, whereas an amateur trader might be risking 200. So do you see what I'm doing early in the morning? Not as many clues, risking less. But then when I'm more confident in the trade, risking much more, do you see what a difference it makes to the uh, equity curve? So let's just remind ourselves of that. What a difference it makes uh, to the equity curve. Okay. So I hope you find that useful. I think it will be fair to say that you will not find anything like that in terms of risk management advice 
anywhere on YouTube because what I showed you is not what retail traders are doing. It is what professional traders are doing who take this business very seriously. The amazing thing is you can see it isn't particularly complicated for you to implement into your trading. So what are you waiting for? Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and also share this video with your friends and then check out this video, which highlights exactly how I set up my trading day for success.